In the early 1900s, Paul Sperry slipped on a deck and fell overboard of his boat. The experience made him start experimenting with new, some new shoe ideas as he realized that there really was no boating footwear because at the time there's there's only two main types of construction for boat kind of shoes. Crepe rubber, which was really slippery when wet. And there was the coiled rope soles that were rubber that had little like threads of rope in it essentially. And those were really slippery when it was dry. And Sperry allegedly got the idea for the boat shoes as he was observing his cocker spaniel running down an icy hill without slipping. And upon closer inspection of his dog, he realized his pads had little teeny grooves that helped the dog get some form of traction on such a slippery surface. So he wanted to take that same concept and apply it to footwear. Based off that idea, he took a regular outsole and started cutting traction tread into it. And then in 1935, Paul creates the very first, his very first non-slip deck shoe featuring a canvas upper, a white outsole that wouldn't scuff up the ship deck and a herringbone outsole to give you that extra bit of grip. But it wasn't until a couple years later in 1937 that the actual iconic boat shoe, this loafer style, was introduced when the Commonwealth Shoe and Leather Company would partner with Paul to create a water resistant leather, which became the familiar boat shoe. After they saw the success with that new outsole in 1940, Paul consulted with L.L. Bean, the actual person L.L. Bean and not the store, because there was a potential U.S. Navy contract on the line where they ne negotiated the rights to manufacture that kind of shoe for the U.S. Naval Academy. And after they got that big contract, also in 1940, Paul Sperry sold the brand to U.S. Rubber Co. and then handed over that contract as they manufactured all those shoes for the U.S. Navy. And a lot of times when the main guy, the, the driving force behind the brand leaves the brand, a lot of times that's where you start seeing everything going downhill. But because of its success and its popularity, by the 1960s, it was a mainstay fashion piece for the East Coast kind of preppy look and was really popularized by JFK, Paul Newman, Mr. Rogers. Berries just continued to grow in more and more popularity. But in 1979, Stride Right Corporation purchased both Ked and Sperry from the U.S. Rubber Company. In 1987, Sperry became the official sponsor of the U.S. Sailing Team, who went on to win the American Cup that same year. But then, as we ease into the 90s and the 2000s, where a lot of brands really started to suffer as so much foreign mass production was taking over the footwear world, Sperry also wanted to see that expansion as they expand to international markets like Europe, Asia, Latin America. But in 2007, Payless Shoe Source acquired Sperry. And if you don't know who Payless is, it's kind of like the budget shoes. You see them on the corner. I don't even know if they're still in business, but they're just like budget shoes. Just when you thought the acquisitions were done, in 2012, Wolverine Worldwide and Blum Capital Partners acquired Sperry. In 2015, they completely dropped the name Topsider as part of their campaign, which concerned people even more. But the biggest thing, in 2023, Wolverine announced that it was searching for a strategic alternative for the, uh, the Sperry brand as profits had dropped a staggering 41%. And because of that, in January of this year, 2024, they sold Sperry to the athletic brand group, which is now licensing out the Sperry name to the Aldo group. But the authentic brand group, they make fry too. If you haven't seen that video, I don't even know if it's out yet, which one comes out first, but you'll want to watch this one because it'll inform the quality that this might have. Now I want to figure out and I want to know, are they saving the Sperry name? Are they maintaining those qualities that were baked into it with that Chevron sole that gave you the grip, the non-marking sole, all these things that made this what it is. Did it stay the same, at least somewhat, as it was acquired over and over and over through all these various brands? That's what we're going to figure out by running it through our tests, cutting it in half to really figure out Sperry making Sperry's the way that built the name and built the brand, or is it just another cash out? Is this a real moccasin construction, or they just completely got rid of it? It just looks like a moccasin. That's what we're going to figure out. So we just released a bunch of our products in our specialty leathers, like the like the shrunken bison, some of that red wing like leather, our blood core, and people right right off the bat, we were like, hey, I want that in a bracelet. Hey, I want it, I want a wallet in that. I want this. And so we just kind of been adding a bunch of stuff to our offering in those leathers, like our knot bracelet. This is one of the very first products we ever designed. It's, you know, just. And it's not even designed in quotations because all it really is is a little strip of leather with a little slit in the end. You put it through the slit, tie a little knot in it, and you got a knot bracelet. Now we also are releasing all these little rings. And these rings, the most, like the funniest way to ever come up with a product, because these might look familiar to you. It's this exact same piece. This little part that we add on our slim neck strap and our slim wrist strap is this little piece. And so we just started cutting them out of all the specialty leathers so you can make little rings out of it. You know, it was not even planned. It just happened to work out perfectly. Someone in the shop was like, you can make that into a ring. And I was like, I think you could actually. So if you want to try out some of these leathers and you don't want to buy a $600 or $700 boot to try out some blood core or some uh, some of the shrunken bison, a chrome XL, because that's the fun of it, is you get, a, you get a sample of some of these leathers that you've always wanted to get, but in a product that's a fraction of the cost, where you still get to see it age, you see how it reacts to how you live and the sweat and oil and dirt that you, you 
have in your daily life. So check out the knot bracelets below and the rings below in all of our specialty leathers and our stock leathers. So check them out below. So what is this shoe? Well, the brand is Sperry. The style is the authentic original two eye boat shoe. They weigh with 12.7 ounces. They retail for $110 and they're made in Bangladesh. And the way they position this product is since 1937, our authentic original boat shoe has defined coastal style for decades through its supreme craftsmanship, signature technology, and iconic silhouette. Featuring a rich leather, the authentic original two eye boat shoe features with our 360 lacing system for a customized fit, topped off with the signature features like our original razor cut wave siping technology. Technology. You can easily pair this boat shoe with slacks, board shorts, or denim. If you want to pair these, check them out. There'll be links in my description. On occasion, it helps us fund the brand when you check out the links. And so already, there's like a you know 360 lacing system. Their signature wave siping that I don't really see, to be honest. So now I'll start looking at the details and see really what's what. Because they say it's a full grain leather, but once again, it's not a full grain leather. It's it's slightly buff. That's where you get that kind of microfiber matte kind of look to it. And it is from a gold rated tannery. And they say it has an upscale burnish treatment. So it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of positioning going on that doesn't seem to be really true because it's just a regular leather. There's really nothing else to it. It's not a waterproof leather because we just had a curiosity. We ran the waterproof test and obviously it's not even remotely waterproof and not that anyone's buying them for that, but I'm just curious. And this upscale burnishing treatment, I have no idea what they're talking about. Usually that means like there's some dye or some like hitting it on the, the buffing wheel to give it some, some polish, but it just looks like nothing was no aging or patina or brushing was done to it. But the leather is pretty thick. It's about two millimeters thick, which is thicker than most sneakers. And so that at least is a good sign to me because where this boot is completely unlined, it, you need a little bit of thicker leather and you want that durability. And I, it's just that heritage kind of moccasin construction. And so I like that there's a thicker leather. The only thing you can really even point to in the lining is this little elastic strap that just holds the tongue in place. kind of keeps the tension. Oh, and now I know what they mean by 360 degree lacing. You know, sometimes that's what, half the fun of this is like, I'm like, what is this? It's so stupid. And then I'm like, oh wait, uh, Solomon, you're supposed to tuck the laces into the actual like pocket. That makes sense. My bad. 360 lacing for sure means that the laces go all the way around your foot. So that is, that is like a thing that will actually work. I don't know where you tie it because I don't see, yeah, where do you tie it? Is it tucked into here? Well, maybe I take it back. Maybe you can't even tie these. Let's just find out, shall we? Pull the Gerber out real quick. Come on. I was like, I was trying to give some credit back to Sperry, but it's not, you can't even tie them. And these obviously are not tying shoes. They're slip on shoes. And if we look at the actual insole, it's a non-removable insole, but we just kind of pulled it out so you could check it out. And a pretty simple half sock liner, just a, a cheap ish foam, nothing special, a little fabric sewn on top. But this is where we start to get to the, is this a true moccasin? Is this a real moccasin construction? Cause I honestly thought because of how many times it was sold, I was like, there's no way it's still a true moccasin, but it is. You can see that underneath the ball of your foot is a seamless piece of leather that wraps up the sidewalls and then is sewn to this u-shaped piece at the top if you want to see a crazy moccasin a true american classic moccasin that has not fallen off a cliff like a lot of these brands go watch the russell moccasins video that's like the the only brand that's still truly making a heavy duty true moccasin construction blending the native american moccasin style with that european boot making technique so go watch that because this is similar because if you look on the inside there's a blake stitch running all the way around so even that stitch is real i was really doubting if it was just glued together and it wasn't a real moccasin but that stitching is actually functional and it's structural. And so honestly, it pretty impressed so far because it is a true moccasin. It's, it's a true Blake stitch construction. It's unlined, so it's gonna be more durable. And when you wear these out, like the outsole, you can just have, take it to a cobbler and they'll be able to sew a new one on. But you can see that there is a little bit of foam in this construction because right here at the heel, there's a little pad of foam to give you just a little bit of squish, a little bit of comfort. And I'm really not too worried about that when it comes to the resole ability because basically every moccasin that's true has to have that seam down the middle. When you resole it, you could just replace the foam anyway. So it's, it's still, you know, it's still within reason for me to be resolable, but it is a pretty soft foam. It's about 30 shore A, so you're gonna get a good amount of squish out of there. And then if, if I'm, I'm feeling through the rest of it, and I, I think there's foam through the rest of the midsole. If I'm feeling the outsole, it has a little bit more squish than I'd expect. And then to the outsole, you know, it's a pretty it's pretty soft, non-marking outsole. It's got their, what they say, their Sperry razor cut wave siping technology for the ultimate wet dry traction when it's, it's like a fraction of a millimeter deep. And like, we wore these around for like the B-roll. Yeah, that's gonna give you a little bit of extra traction for like, I don't know, 100 steps, but the actual outsole, it's really not too bad. It's a 65 Shore A, the bar drop tested, four and a half inches, not the greatest score, but like I think it's gonna be a nice, long wearing, durable outsole, because it is that 65 Shore A. And, and we did the puncture test and it took 88 pounds to puncture through. I'm very surprised at how much I like this, this shoe and how much it really is true to the original. You know, there's some weird stuff with it. Honestly, pretty impressed. So now let's cut this thing in half, because sometimes you're, I'm impressed with something until we cut it in half and I'm like, uh, this is like, there's nothing but garbage on the inside.
inside and then it taints my whole image of the brand or the, the product because that's where most brands hide their flaws and that's why they do it because most people are never gonna find out and that's the value of cutting all these footwear in half so you guys actually know what you're buying. So let's cut them in half. Okay, we got it cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider pushing that little subscribe button. We're almost to a million subscribers. We got some really cool stuff planned for a million subscribers. As soon as we hit that, that mark, we're gonna announce like three or four really big things that we're doing. So help us get across that finish line. Give us a little sub, give us a like. Now, let's see what's inside. So like we expected, there is some foam in that midsole, which I like, you know, I, I, if I'm gonna be wearing a pair like this that is actually resolable, I'm gonna want to have a little bit of squish underneath there. It comes in at about a 20 short A, so really soft. It's gonna give you that squishiness underneath your foot while that outsole is still surprisingly thick. Cause that outsole is still, let me, let me find out. The outsole is like six millimeters thick. So it's like, it's a good thick outsole. Looks like it's dual density, but it, I put the little durometer test on there and it's 60 short A and 68. So it's, it's slightly different densities, but not a crazy amount and most of where you get that squish is going to be through the foam and obviously you have that big patch at the heel too give me a little bit of comfort and now we can see for sure that it is truly like a blake stitch construction that traditional moccasin and that mock toe stitch is the two pieces that come up and are sewn together and so it is it is truly a, a real moccasin shoe i did not think that especially after we did the what was it, the clarks that were like a modern version and they were not even close to like a true moccasin this shocked me so then to the answers we posed at the beginning, is this representative of the, the Sperry history, the Sperry that built this boat shoe style, got the contract with the US Navy, is the quality still the quality that built the name or is it not? Shockingly, it is. It's still a really good quality product. You know, there's some weird stuff with like the branding and a few things here and there, but it's resolable, it's high quality leather, it's nice and thick. You know, it's, there's a lot of the features that are baked in that built this brand and that's so surprising to me. And it really is a true moccasin construction. It is a good little shoe. It's a little pricey, but it's good. And there's, there's clearly something to it. They're not just popular because of hype. I think they're popular because they are good shoes. So let me know what you guys think and your experience in them. Maybe I missed something. Maybe there is a way to tie the, the 360 laces that I'm missing. Uh, let me know. So thank you guys. See ya.